Okay, well, let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Code HS grading web webinar. My name is Molly, and I'm one of the account executives here at Code HS. That means I work with teachers and admins to help bring Code HS to your school or district. I also have my colleague Diana here with um, who will answer questions as they come up. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Like Molly said, my name is Diana, and I'm an account manager here at Code HS, and I help teachers and admins implement Code HS in their classrooms. Okay, well, this webinar will cover grading in a computer science class, how to grade on Code HS Pro versus free, and also Code HS Pro grading tools and resources. The webinar will last about 30 minutes. Um, at any point during the webinar, you can ask questions in the Q&A box and we will respond live or we will respond to you directly over the Q&A box. Before we get started, can everyone raise a hand if you are currently grading on the free plan? Okay, and raise your hand if you have pro. Awesome, but before we dive into teacher tools, you may be wondering how to even begin grading a computer science class. Diana is going to give you a quick overview of what we think about when we discuss grading in a computer science class. Thanks, Molly. There are many methods that schools will use to grade a computer science class, and we know that this will vary by school and by teacher. We also know that teachers do have their own unique way of grading. So at Code HS, our goal has been to create tools and resources that supplement and support the work that you already do in the classroom. Today, we'll run through what those tools are and how to use them effectively. For a typical computer science class, we encourage teachers to consider mastery-based grading. Through this method, you can show that students have demonstrated mastery of a certain set of material. There are a few ways to check for this. One is checking completion up to a certain point to see if they've passed specific problems. Another option is having students build a project to demonstrate complex understanding of a concept. A third option could be showing mastery by passing a challenging exercise. And then another option is to demonstrate mastery through an exam or quiz or another type of assessment. On a daily basis, we know that judging mastery can be difficult for one teacher to do on their own for each individual problem. So on Code HS, we do have instant feedback or an auto grader that is built into every Code HS exercise. This is a system of code checks that every exercise on Code HS is run through when students run and check their code. For example, this image is of a student's code editor. Now, if the student has major functional issues with his or her program, that exercise won't pass instant feedback and won't be submitted until those issues are fixed. The auto graders are also a great resource for checking the functionality of a code, and they can assess whether a student wrote a function, if the function met the specific expectations of the exercise, and if they achieved the correct output. However, we also know that when grading, style is an important part to the quality of a program. And good programming style will mean these four things. The program is easy to read and follow. Functions and variables have descriptive names. The program is commented accurately and the program is broken down to the right level of granularity. So now that we've looked at what factors we'll consider when grading student code, we want to spend some time taking a look at the specific tools available on Code HS. Molly's going to get us started by reviewing grading through the Code HS free plan specifically. Thanks, Diana. As Diana mentioned, I'm going to go through a couple workflows of grading with the free account. So a couple ways to do that. Um, first is to start on your class page with your student roster. You can click on any of your students' name to view their progress and to see exactly what they have completed. So I'm going to go to my student, Jordan Wells. This is going to take me to his class page. I can expand each of these modules and see what he's completed or has not completed in each of these lessons. Each of these icons are going to be color coded based on what has been started what hasn't been started, what's been completed, and then also what I've graded. So I'm going to go into one of these exercises, and this is going to take me to the code editor page. So here I have Jordan's submission here in the center part of the screen. Then as a teacher, going over to the More tab, 
is where I can find the solution. So yes, solutions are available with the free accounts. Then after reviewing the solution, going over to the help tab, this is where I can pr provide feedback for my student, offer suggestions, and also where I would mark the exercise as either pass or needs work. So great job, pass, and then send. Once I've done that, the students' um, icons are going to change from that solid green to a bolded green or a pink if I've marked it as needs work. They're also going to receive that feedback that I left for them at the top of their page when they log in. Now, the second way of completing grading with the free account would be through your code review dashboard, which you can access up here through your, your toolbox, underneath code review, and then your dashboard. On your dashboard, there's a couple pieces. One is the student help questions. So just as I can message students through that help tab, they can send me those questions. And then underneath that, you have your student submissions. So from here, you can click on any of the student exercises. Again, it's going to take you to the code editor page for that student. You can run through their code, find the solution code again underneath more, and then go back to the help tab and leave that feedback. Um, any questions about grading with the free account or providing feedback to students on the free account? There are no questions at this time. Okay, perfect. Well, then I'm going to pass it back over to Diana so that she can continue with some of the Pro Tools. Thanks, Molly. All right, so we are going to start. Um, when we look at the CodeHS Pro Tools, we're gonna to open up the code review dashboard again. So I'm gonna pull up my demo account now as well. As Molly mentioned, this will be your central database for all code review and that that's true for both the free plan as well as the pro plan. Pro, uh, pro plan. You'll see that there are two options for sorting through code submissions when you're looking at it on the pro plan. Those two options are over here, your grade mode and fast grade. Grade mode is going to take you from one student's code editor or submission to the next without having to return to the code review dashboard. I'm gonna open that up to show you what that will look like. So this will look similar to what Molly demoed. I will be taken to the student's code editor. I can select help over here, and then I can pass the assignment, and it will automatically take me to the next submission in my feed. So you'll see that it's automatically syncing to the next one. Once you've answered all of the questions that are in your queue in grade mode, you'll be returned to the code review dashboard. Fast grade is a little bit different, and this is a really handy tool to help you grade a bunch of student submissions in a row. Let's take a look at what fast grade looks like. So fast grade on the pro plan is going to show you the student's code side by side with the solution code. So I can see that I have all the different students' names here. I can easily pass an assignment or select needs work from here. I have a space to leave comments, and then I have the solution code as well. Anytime I leave a grade, it's going to cycle up the next submission. Leaving specific feedback through FastGrade is also quick and, sufficient, and, and efficient. So an example here is I can write, please be sure to respond. Um, with an exercise submission. I can send that and then select needs work. We also have a new feature in FastGrade for keyboard shortcuts, which you can find here. These shortcuts allow you to flow through a number of submissions quickly and efficiently. In the upper left-hand side of your FastGrade screen, you'll also see three little icons. The first icon will take you to the student's code editor if you need to see the program um, in more detail or if you'd like to see the history of the program. The second icon will take you to the problem guide for that exercise. And the problem guide is a really great resource for seeing the solution code as well as common questions or mistakes that your students might have when working on this exercise. And then lastly, you can also skip to the next exercise from here as well. 
In the top left hand corner above those three little icons, you'll also find the option to filter and sort. You can filter by class, by student, or by exercise. This will help you determine which problems you're viewing so you're seeing just one type of problem at a time. For example, I'm going to search for the exercise chalkboard. I can apply the filter and now it's showing me just the chalkboard submissions for my students. You may also notice that when giving students feedback on a specific problem, students are making a lot of similar errors. So on CodeHS, you have the ability to create custom canned responses to provide specific feedback for your students without needing to write the same thing over and over. To create a custom canned response, I simply have to open the program in the code editor. So I'll use the little icon over here and I'm going to pull up a new tab. Now here I can see Aiden's assignment in the code editor. I can come over to the help tab over on the right and I'll see down at the bottom the option to add a custom canned response. So an example might be, please leave comments on all of your submissions. I can add the response here. And when I go back to fast grade, I'll see that that custom canned response is now an option for me for any student who has submitted a chalkboard problem. Custom canned response, leave the comment, and then I can pass it or select needs work. I also want to point out, and I'm going to return to my code review dashboard, that you can also view problems on a module by module level as well. This is really nice if you want to work through all of the submissions for just one problem at a time. Um, you'll have the option here to open the module and then select only code review for that problem. So another way to isolate some specific types of submissions and grade just for those problems. Now all of this grading for all of your submissions we know can be pretty overwhelming and daunting if every single submission is being sent to you for review. Therefore, we do have an additional tool called Q settings, and this is an important tool for managing which submissions are being sent to you. I'm going to open up Q settings here as well. Now you can access Q settings from within the code review dashboard or from your toolbox under, under code review, and then you'll see Q settings here. As a teacher, I really like this because it does help me customize the number of submissions that I have based on my schedule and how much time I have to dedicate to grading. I'll see here that setting queue settings is as easy as using the drop down menu and I'll see all the exercise listed all the exercises within that module listed here and I can select if they're sent to my queue or not sent to my queue. I can also set that on a module level as well, and that will allow me to select all the exercises within that. Our recommendation is that you're skewing up every four or five exercises or the exercises that you anticipate will be a new concept for your students or more challenging for them, and those will be ones that you want to keep a closer eye on. Now, the last thing we'll look at when we talk about code review is your sections gradebook. The gradebook is accessible through your toolbox under code review, and it's also accessible again from within the section itself. So I'm going to open up the gradebook here for this section. You'll see that there's a lot of information on the gradebook here, and this is just an example of what it will look like. From here, you can navigate to different sections. So if you have more than one class, you can switch between the classes. If your students are enrolled in more than one course, you can switch between the course that you're viewing. If you've created playlists in CodeHS Create, you can also view the um, grade data for your playlist as well. You can switch between the module you're viewing. And then you'll also see down here that we have color codes that indicate if a student has passed that problem, which means that they passed the auto grader. If it was passed with review, which means that you have as the teacher selected past or selected needs work. And you can also see if the program has been started or not started. 
There are also a lot of additional ways that you can configure this gradebook to kind of meet the grading system that you would like to use in your class. So to configure the gradebook, I have this option here on the right hand side. If I click on this, I can select the grading schema. Linear scaling will give two points for any assignment that was passed and one point for any assignment that was started but still needs work. Pass only is another option. Scaled by difficulty means that assignments that are deemed more difficult by our curriculum team will have a higher point value than others. And then lastly, you have the option to do custom points. By selecting custom points, you can edit the total possible points that are available for each of those problems. And then the final thing to know about the grade book is that you will wanna set the expected progress based on where you anticipate your students are in your course. You'll notice that it's calculating all of the grades for the full course. And by setting expected progress, I can determine up to which point the gradebook is calculating grades for. Once your, grade, once your grades are set up and customized and configured the way that you would like, you can easily export them to an Excel or CSV file and import them to any other grading program that you're using. All right, are there any questions about the pro grading tools that we went over? Diana, there are no questions. Okay, great. And it looks like a lot of questions were also answered in the Q&A box. So if you have any lingering questions, you can always um, enter those in there as well. Okay, that was an overview of grading on Code HS, and we want to thank everyone for joining us today. A recording of the webinar will be posted in the knowledge base later today. And I also wanted to let you know that our next webinar will be the APCSP checklist, top items for a successful year. This will be Wednesday, October 17th at 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much for joining us. We will stay on for just a couple more minutes to answer any last questions. And we hope you have a great school year.